right. and we're open. We're recording. We're open and we're recording. So you're good. Good morning. <laughs> Noting the presence of a quorum. Quorum. <laughs> I am calling the um, governance organization and legislation a le uh, committee to order at what time is it? <laughs> at uh, nine thirty-two. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 and 107 of the Acts of 2022, and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And to make sure each counselor can hear and be heard, I'm gonna ask, call the roll. Mandy Jo Haneke. Present. Lynn Griesmer. Present. Jennifer Taub. Present. And I'm here. Uh, Michelle Miller is uh, on her way. And let's get started, I guess. Um, what I have on the agenda is the Hazel Ab proclamation, but that has not been forwarded to me by the sponsors. Um, we're going to be looking at town manager goals, rules of procedure, the Charter Review Commission minutes, and under the 48-hour rules, um, a resolution uh, on the Israel-Palestinian um, conflict. Uh, I'm going to start with minutes and get those out of the way. Is there anyone who has any issues with either the July 19th, August 2nd, September 13th, or September 27th minutes as presented? Okay. Um, then I oh, move. But oh, just Andy? a question. Yes. I, I think packet, you only have 927. The packet only had the 927 minutes in it. Oh, and Michelle's here. If we could just quickly check that we she can hear. Yeah, can, yeah. So can you? Yeah, can you I, hear? I can hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. The, those are the only minutes. So let's. I move that we accept the nine twenty seven minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Okay. See. All right. Um, let's. Is there any disagreement? Do we have to do a roll call vote? Yes. Yeah. Haneke. Aye. Miller? Aye. Taub? Yes. Griesmer? Aye. And I'm an aye, so it's unanimous acceptance. I guess um, I- uh, Jennifer, Michelle. were you the, were you the second? Yes. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, and I'd like to look to the committee about where you want to begin uh, today's work. Uh, the Charter Review Commission uh, committee could be done, I think, fairly quickly. Michelle, we're taking your uh, proclamation uh, at the end because it's uh, in the 48 hour rule. Um, and Mandy is leaving at 11.10 ish, and I am leaving exactly at 11.30. So, Jennifer, if we're not done, I would love it if you could handle it. Uh, I sure. Maybe we'll your, be done I earlier. I have an absolute hard stop at 1125. Okay, well, then we're, well, and that would eliminate a quorum. So um, if that happened, you know, that's that, I guess. I will probably be ending at 1125. Um, all right. Um, can somebody, and I apologize for this, uh, can somebody update me on the town manager goals? Mandy, you were saying something at the opening of the meeting? I, I don't have any update. I was saying CRC had thought about um, potentially at, you know, proposing some goals related to housing, the housing goals. CRC has not had time to do that. Right. So there is no proposal or, or forward from CRC for that matter, depending on how long this lasts and CRC's timing, there may be something at some point, but that that's a follow-up from a joint meeting we had with the affordable trust in terms of something CRC had said it might be able to do right. to address some of the joint issues, but we're not there yet. So there's nothing from CRC. Hey, Jennifer. Yeah, can you just re uh, refresh my memory? Um, we Do we actually craft the goals in GOL or just set a framework? 
I don't remember. Yeah, I didn't think we um, actually did the we, graph. I, I, go ahead, please. We Where? actually graphed them. And so, but Michelle has her hand up. So let me, I, I would like to say something as well, but Michelle, go first. No, Lynn, I'm not speaking to that. So please go on. Okay. Uh, I want to just, con I want to strongly urge that unless we add an additional goal, that we keep the goal structure the way it is so that we don't have, um, we don't try to massively change them this year, but that the words underneath each of the goals may have to be updated, edited, et cetera. So if, if we can at least have agreement with that, then I think we um, can bring it to the council again in our meeting Monday, just as a reminder from your committee standpoint, from your work, things you have worked on, are there specific things? And please send those suggestions to whoever, Pat. Me yeah, and I would say and Athena. Athena. Yeah. Okay. I, it, so I, if we have agreement that we're keeping the same structure and that the, unless we're adding a new goal, we're not changing goals, then we can work with the stuff underneath. That's my bottom line. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a, a good idea, uh, but I'd like to hear from others. Is there as is there something that hasn't been per, uh, eva you know a, a goal that we want to set that isn't in one of the categories that are already on within his in, within the town manager goals? Okay. I'm going to say there's a consensus that we do what you're suggesting, Lynn. Is there, am I wrong about that? Okay. So that, yeah, I, we will bring that up at Monday's meeting and I think it's a good idea. Michelle? I just, uh, two things. Um, I'm look, I don't know if I'm looking in the wrong place, but it looks like some of the items that are on our agenda and Pat, maybe you already addressed this, um, are not in Basil the- Basil Avenue. Yes, the Hazel it's, Avenue. We, I didn't receive anything from the sponsors, so we are not dealing with it today. Is okay. there something else? Um, just the 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 town manager goals. Um, I don't I don't think I see them in here, but maybe no. Well, we're just talking about that now. Oh, okay. So and and okay. accepting Lynn's um, suggestion. Suggestion. Okay, and then the other thing is, I have a future agenda item that I wanted to just put on the radar potentially. Um, so it, I know we're all having to leave a little early. So if that could just yeah. be something we discuss at the end, that'd be great. Depends on time, Mandy. Yeah, I would just want to second Michelle's um, item about the packet. It would be really helpful if a word document of the manager goals is in the packet for whatever. Yeah discussing it so that we can modify it um, and, and think about those updates. Cause I know there are some standard updates that need to happen every year. Um, yeah. yeah and I apologize. Not in the packet. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I didn't add anything because I was anticipating that we would have feedback and that I, Pat and I would be incorporating the feedback into the existing draft, but we don't have anything to incorporate in, into the existing draft right now. So I, I didn't, anticipate the committee would do much with the goals because we didn't have any input yet so and that's what's happening um <laughs> one of the things athena would you uh, and make sure that this is all right can you send everybody um the current goals i think we can probably but if you could send everybody on the committee so that they can be looking at them for our next meeting that would be helpful yeah so, and and the, the i think another reason i didn't want to send out the word version. I can send the current goals um, and they're they're online on the town manager page. That's but, true. But it gets yeah. really confusing. We're running into this with the rules. It gets really confusing when we have five different versions of a word of, of marked changes um, in a word doc. So that's why we had asked, Pat and I had asked for changes come to us so that we could incorporate them all into one document. But I can send the, I can post and send the current goals yeah, I'm not asking people to actually modify what you send, but to still send us changes, the two of us, the changes. Uh, but I, and yes, we can go on. You don't have to do anything right. and, on the town website to look at those and, and refresh ourselves. Okay. Does that feel comfortable? Okay. 
All right, then um, I'm gonna, unless somebody else has a comment about town manager goals, I'm gonna move on um, to the charter review. Does that feel comfortable? And we are looking at this to decide whether it's clear, consistent and actionable. Um, I, th I think the referral was to um, just approve the, I don't think the council is expecting it to come back. I think it was to, yeah. to approve this and make sure that the, um, the language is correct space and, and the, um, oh my gosh, the, the, um, the application form the works. For, form. Thank you. That works <laughs> for this. That works for this committee. Say um, that again, so Mandy. This, the community activity form, which yep. I've pulled up from this link that's in the bulletin board notice, it, it's not sufficient right now. Right. We have to, um, we have to add that. I didn't want to add it yet because it's not, we're not opening to applications until the new year. So, um, but I will do that before we post this. Um, and this is just drafted based on other vacancy notices. I just put this together um, as a jumping off point. I'm sorry, I'm distracted. I have a neighbor who went to the hospital and I'm trying to respond. I know I'm not supposed to do that to so I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm. I'm. Can let me see. Is there anything in here that we need to address? It doesn't sound very much like there is. Michelle. Are we looking at this like from an edit editing standpoint? Yes. Or, okay. So I, I don't know if we need the uh before the four. Um, I think it can just say in every year ending in four. Where where are you? Um in the little ending in a four comma power, power first sentence. Yeah, first sentence. Oh, this is from the charter. So that comes right. I was just going to ask you, did that get pulled right from the charter? Yeah. So then I guess it stays. It's it just yeah. it's a qu <laughs> yeah, it's a quote. <laughs> Damn, uh, it sounded just like a little off to me, but uh, yeah. yeah, all no, right. right, fair enough. You could you can send that edit edit to the <laughs> charter. <laughs> That'll be the charter review commission, right? <laughs> yeah. We did that with bylaws, so sure. Um, Mandy and then Lynn. Yeah, I I don't have anything specific for the the vacancy notice for the bulletin board other than obviously we'd add the link in i'd like to right. talk about the community activity form when we get there after we're done with this and also the timing of posting this vacancy notice okay so Lynn, Lynn, sorry Lynn. Uh, i would put i would put either quotes on the part that comes from the charter or I would put it in italics so that we don't end up with the same question. Yeah, yeah. that does it for me, thanks. Yeah. Anything else? Not right now. Yeah, okay, I think we're down to the CAFs. Whoop. I don't see. I think Athena could just pull up the link from the bulletin yeah. board notes. Okay. Oh. Whoa. I think, yeah, there you go. And can you make it a little larger? Okay, Mandy and then Lynn. So a couple things. 
Um, on the second paragraph, we should remove districting advisory board since it's not an option anymore because, well, we only do that once every 10 years. And in its place, we should probably put the 2024 Charter Review Committee. Um, it's just the second paragraph of the explanation. Um, the third paragraph, we do not keep the CAFs on file for three years anymore. We keep them on two per hour policy, the council policy. Um, so that paragraph and then way down on the certification, I think needs updated to two years. Um, in the like required, please read the following statement says three years and both of them need to be two years because mm -hmm. uh, that's the new policy. And then obviously we need to add the, the charter review committee to the police select all that you are interested in. Um, I was glad to see that the districting advisory board is out because <laughs> it was <laughs> weird to get a, a CAF for that after it was done the one time. Um, so thank you, Athena, if you're the one that updated for that. And then I wondered, as someone who has to contact individuals, um, based on these CAFs, um, we have a gender box, but I think a pronoun box would be helpful too, because sometimes the gender box is not filled out, or even if the gender box is filled out, people don't always use pronouns that go with the gender being filled out. So I would request that we add a pronoun box to make it easier for those of us who actually contact candidates to make sure we're contacting them using the right pronouns if we do mm -hmm. reference them pronouns instead of names. I would not make it required, but I think it would be nice to add a box that way. People don't no. always fill out a pronoun box either. <laughs> no, I know, but but they might those that those that care enough and doesn't match might actually do that, which would help us. Yeah. Mandy, do you, uh, well, go ahead, Lynn. Um, Mandy, do you want it to have eliminate the gender box and have that be the pronoun box? That's what I was thinking. Um, we are, we're supposed to be reporting gender applicants by gender in our reports under the policy. So I would not eliminate that. Right. Um, under the policy right now, we're supposed to report the demographics of the applicants, which includes gender. Um, okay. All right. Can I, could you go up to the top again? Um, before we move on from that, should this be gender identity? Oh, yes. That makes sense. Does that um maybe the best thing then is to have that one be gender identity and have the pronouns up with your basic info yeah, information cool. about name? I would be fine with that. I would too. I think that's good. Preferred I just wouldn't make it a required answer. Right. Right. Okay. So again, I want to go back up to the top. Um, so in the bold letters, we also need to take out districting advisory board. Right. Uh, and then if we're going to put in the 2024 charter review committee, uh, do we want it first? And that's fine if we do. But then after planning board, should there be a comma? Michelle, I don't, I don't hmm. think we need a comma there, but I'm not. I, I always use a comma in the same way as if the word was and zoning board of appeals, right. but that's, you know, my own style, maybe. Um, that was my only comment. Okay. 
Michelle? My comment was just on the um, pronouns. Um, I received feedback in, in, in AHRA um, about removing the word preferred um, from the uh, statement that we read for pub public comment, I think it is. Um, and the feedback was just that it wasn't like, it shouldn't be looked at as like a preferred, it, it's like what it's, I, I'm not very good at all this, but I'm, I'm, I just wanted to point that, that word. And where is this, where are you referencing it? Oh, I think someone said to maybe include preferred pronouns um, in the, uh, with the name and. I'm I just thought saying, that, yeah. I, mean, I, I like notes, the just idea. pronouns. Just pronouns is what I'm pronouns trying to do. is fine. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's what I thought we were doing. Okay, perfect. Anything else? And do people want the comma? <laughs> Somebody that, told yeah. me it was generational yeah. doing that. <laughs> It um, go is. ahead, push that, Tom. No, <laughs> no, because I always I do put the comma, but that was older people do that, like me. No, <laughs> it's a legal thing. If the Oxford comma makes it clearer, and we've been using yeah. it on everything, so the comma would go there. But with the um, there's an or in that bold section, but two paragraphs in, we say and. <laughs> <clears throat> so we should make them agree whether it's I think it should be and and then it should be so in, in the title I think it should be and oh yeah it should be and because it's not or you know you can apply to planning but you can't ap uh, apply to CBA yeah so both of those and we'll add the Oxford comma before the end to satisfy elders on the committee <laughs> i don't think it's generational i don't either anyway you know what actually someone said was generational is certain spacing but that's another oh the double spacing after yes. a period that's that generation yeah yeah i've never done that um and i'm old and mandy did you had your hand up was there something <laughs> is there anything else you guys are doing a great job mandy you wanted to mention you wanted to talk about the dates oh that's not related to the activity form, but you know, our, our referral is post by January 2nd. I guess the question is, do we want to have it posted before then? It, it needs posted for 14 days before anyone can do anything, or do we want it posted sort of on the second, the day things are transferring over? I thought we should just make a decision as to when it's most appropriate to be posted. If we do it beforehand, the, I think the concern is <clears throat> the current counselors would get the applicant information if people applied now. Um, and then the new counselors might not have that information or it would need forwarded mm -hmm. to them. It'd be a little more record keeping, I think, than if we posted it sort of at the transition. But I, I don't know what is better. Give a longer time for people to apply or a shorter time. Yeah. I think we just post it on the day that every ch everything change changes. I'm not sure if I agree, but I could go either way. I cuz I've already got people talking to me about charter review committee yeah. and stuff like that. So they may be the community may be ready to start putting uh, applicate, you know, CAFs in about that. So, yeah. Michelle? Yeah. It, so the question is whether to do it, whether to post it prior to the new council turning over or not. I think it, I, I do think that makes sense what Mandy said about, um, you know, then having some folks getting it that really don't need it, like myself, for example, or um, having to forward, mm -hmm. you know, I would imagine, Pat, if we put this out, I agree with you, actually. <laughs> I imagine if we put this out, it's going to start getting a lot of responses. So do we want, you know, to begin that process now or prior to that turnover? I don't know. I then would it's go got a very strong head shake going on. After, right? Is, yeah, yeah, it's my... Take Mandy Joe's comment first. I... I 
I, I, I could go either way, probably. <laughs> um, the record keeping would obviously be easier if we don't post it until the transition. Um, yet, both GOL and CRC already do record keeping because we keep things on file for two years. And so there's already record keeping that transfers over for finance, ZBA, and planning board about CAFs and acts, you know, and and putting them in, in appropriate places so the new council has access to all of that. Um, so it's not like we can't do it. It just adds more work for um well i think it's gol that's doing this although it hasn't fully been assigned yet it adds more work for someone um <laughs> to make sure all the record keeping is there mm. um but it's not that it can't be done because it's being done for the other three committees already all the time um and yet i i agree with michelle that I think people are anxious and maybe wanting to, the longer we wait, maybe we lose some of that momentum, um, especially if we post right after the holidays where people might not be paying as much attention. Yet, in some sense, it doesn't make sense to hold it out open for four months when no one, when we know we're not doing anything with it for those four months. It That's just puts people sort of in a waiting pattern. That's true. Lynn and then Jennifer. Or actually, go ahead. So let me explain further why I feel that we should just post it on the twenty on the second of January. You're going to have a new council. You're going to have to get through committee assignments. At, at that point, uh, you're going to have new councilors because we know there's going to be some new councilors. I it, that first month is it, it's basically people trying to find their way. And the I think posting it on the second is fine. No committee is going to be dealing with it for at least the first month of the council, or at least the first maybe three weeks of the council. So I that's one reason why I just started on the second, have your 14 days. I also do not agree with posting things over holiday periods. I think people are, you know, very critical of that. And they should be. and But we do also need to be sensitive to the fact that a lot of faculty members are not around from the, you know, end of the hot, the beginning of the holidays till the end of January. Yeah. So um, I think 14 days is a minimal posting on this one, too. Jennifer? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Lynn. I also hear, I think people get frustrated if they submit a form and they don't hear back for a long time, because I hear, have residents say, you know, nobody's gotten back to me. So I think we don't need to invite, you know, make it longer when we know they're not going to hear back for increase that period that they're not hearing from us and being interviewed. Mandy and then Michelle. So I was going to say something similar, except that if we post on the second, um, there is no one defaulting person to actually respond to any CAFs that are submitted for things like, oh, we received it and here's the next steps and here's when we guess they will be. And so we would need to, I think, sadly assign Athena that role because we can't even say the president, we don't know who any of that would be. Um, whereas if we post earlier, there is someone at, at least until January that does that and so might the initial swell of potential um, applicants is at least taken care of. And then there's not, but when you post on the second, I suspect the first week or so will receive a lot, but there's no one in the council set to do anything with them, which is also problematic um, from that. No one might hear back. No one knows who's on the committee, who who is the point person, if there's any questions or even a timing of that, not that we know a timing now. So I think we need to deal with that if, if we're going to post in January, we need to have a plan in place for respond for who will respond to submitted CAFs. And that would be an issue in either CAF. case. That would be an issue in either case if it's posted earlier and then applications come in January, then there wouldn't be an assigned person to respond until mm -hmm. uh, the council is reorganized. So there, 
if it's posted earlier, there would be like this transitional period where nobody's responding. Thank you, Athena. Michelle? Two things. Um, the first is I, along that lines, I was wondering if um, there was an automatic message that went back when people submit CAFs or that if we could create, and not to create more work, but if there was a, a message that could automatically be returned to the person who has submitted the CAF that would just give some of that basic information, like, you know, you should hear with us with from somebody within X amount of time or whatever the sort of parameters are there. Um, I always find that helpful when I submit something to like know there's some feedback that came back to me. Um, and then the other uh, question I have is do, so I'm just imagining myself, I'm not going to be on council. If I were to see calves now and also be someone that was going to apply to the charter, is there any conflict of interest there? Like if only counselors review the calves and they're not made public, only the demographics are made public. I feel a little bit uneasy about that, like knowing who else would be in the pool, you know, potentially. So that's another consideration on timing. Athena and then Lynn. There is um you after you submit, you bring you come to a page that says thank you for submitting. If you check the box that um that will send you an email of a copy of what you've submitted, then you'll get that in your email. Um, but I don't believe it's been a while since I dealt with the form center. Um I I don't believe that we can edit um what you any kind of um the the thank you for submitting page i think that's kind of an automatically generated thing or is either i remember this coming up in when when there were changes to the calf early on and i believe brianna's advice was that it's it's sort of a boxed thing that either we can't change or it applies to too many things that if we make it more specific, then it doesn't make sense in other situations. So I think it's, um, that's why it's important for someone to be getting back to people who submit rather than it being an, an automated thing. Lynn? As of January 2nd, you will have a president and a vice president of the council. That's what the meeting on January 2nd is about. So it doesn't all fall to Athena. It it would just need assigned to the president or vice president to do those responses because right now the policy assigns it to the committee chair that is holding the interviews. Right. Yep. So it seems like we should leave it alone on that Is, hour. Athena? Lynn, are you suggesting, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to raise my hand. Lynn, are you suggesting that this come back to the council as a um, assignment for GOL at some point? I, um, I am, I, I guess I thought we'd already settled that, but if we didn't, it does need to come back to GOL as an assignment. I don't think the council has voted to make GOL the um, the interview committee. And the council, the new council may not want that. They may want to do the interviews themselves for the whole council. Again, a reason to wait until the second. That was also yeah. a good reason why we and I think Mandy Joe you suggested this we basically backed up the whole calendar by three months to give the council an opportunity to get their feet on the ground. Mandy? So it sounds like an agenda item for January 2nd would be um assignment of you know, or or waiving the, or revising or whatever the policy is for who responds to these CAFs until said whatever is, and and figure out the wording for it, right? Um, but also a motion to refer the um, the twenty twenty four 
CAFs, how, again, I'm not sure what the wording is to be to, um, you know, or to assign GOL or pick a committee, the responsibility of applying the town council policy on making recommendations for the 2024 charter review committee, um, some language like that, but that those two items should be on a motion sheet and an agenda for January 2nd. What was the first thing? The first thing would be to assign, it, it, it depend. the wording would depend on whether the council refers the the 2024 committee to a committee so waive the policy or assign is that what you said well well uh, so so first motion would be to assign to a committee the doing the policy to make recommendations to the council um or you're waiving the policy because the council is deciding to do it but then if the policy if the council decides to send the recommendation off to I, i'm just going to assume gol for now to, to do the interviews and make a recommendation to the council on who to appoint between the time uh, there need to be a motion to assign the responsibility of responding to CAFs to the president or vice president until such time as GOL has a president, a chair, I mean, um, but if the council doesn't, do, decides to keep the recommend, I mean, there wouldn't be a recommendation then, keep the, the policy and execute sort of portions of the policy itself, then the the president presumably would default to being the person who responds. And so you wouldn't need that motion um, because the policy says the chair of the committee, which would be the president. So it'd be like these two potential motions, depending on what happens with who's doing the recommending. Then, Yeah. Um since the president actually convenes each of the committees uh, when they when they hold their election, uh, that is also the case. But I just want to point out, it is very possible. Well, in fact, District 5 has one of the finance committee members, and that at this point at least is an uncontested race unless there's a huge write-in. Uh, and so there's going to be use needs for, need for these calves for n not just this but for finance committee as well so what would you folks like to do mandy i mean it sounds like we don't we could make a motion ourselves but i think depending on i think it's the the referral to gol allows us to decide when to post it as long as it's posted by january 2nd and so if you want a motion i think the motion would be to post the bulletin board notice on january 2nd 2024 it sounds like that's where we're leaning <laughs> so that's the motion i'd make but i'm not sure we need a motion necessarily it's just the referral was to post by and now that we've reviewed the vacancy notice i believe pat until that day you have the authority to to essentially ask athena to post on any particular day you want without uh -huh. a from the committee finally some <laughs> <hour>. <laughs> please post it on january 2nd <laughs> ms o'keefe <laughs> Is is the second the second's not a holiday, right? Uh, it's not usually a holiday. Well, it no. depends on whether the first is. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. The first is a Monday, so the second is not. Okay. Okay. It's, uh, it, I think everybody. Well, that agrees means with we're that. not being sworn in. The new counselors aren't being sworn in until. They're being January. sworn in. No, they're being sworn in on the second, Mandy Joe. The oh, oh, though that is true. We get sworn yeah. in. Would get sworn in on the second, but the first regular meeting would still be the seventh, but yeah, right. no, the, the, charter doesn't the first Tuesday, eighth. Monday. Eighth, yeah. yeah. The eighth, sorry, yeah. We like it when you make even small mistakes, dear. <laughs> hey, no one's perfect. <laughs> Anything else on this subject? I think we've gotten where we need to get on it. All right. Well, what we can do now is to start looking at the rules of procedure or 
we could take the Hamas um, resolution um, up first, given that rules and procedure can. I think the escalate. goal is to have if the, is to have the resolution come to the council on Monday. So we need to make sure it gets done. Yeah, and since there are people, yeah, let's let's bring that up and and deal with that. Did, yeah, Athena, do you have a copy? Yeah. Pat, did you want me to say something? Is that what you're uh, reading? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm I'm <laughs> I this know, I resolution, <laughs> this proclamation it, it just throws my head into a lot of places. So I'm I'm I apologize, Michelle. Yes, I'd like you to introduce it. Sure. And I, I think that's what you just said. That's a perfect segue. Um I think that's uh fair. And um, so I just I what I wanted to say was just to share the process uh, by which this proclamation comes to be. And um, I, I heard from a, con a community member over the weekend who asked that we consider as a council making some sort of statement. Um, and I recognized immediately, while I'm not an expert in any of this, um, that this was a sensitive matter that, that needed to be handled um, sensitively. So I took the next 24 hours or so to speak to different members of the community, representing different groups and um, people who had understandings on sort of all sides of this matter. Um, my focus here was to uh, not get into the politics of the conflict, but to uh, clearly clearly uh, focus on um, the attack itself that occurred. Um, and so uh, after pulling together lots of different statements from different folks, um, I uh, put this together and this is where it stands now. Thank you. Michelle, I appreciate, appreciate the process that you went through. Uh, Mandy? I, I do too. So so thank you, Michelle, for, for speaking to everyone and all. Um, a couple of questions, and then this is clarity, consistency, and actionability. So um, a couple of modifications. Um, the modifications are easy in, in some sense. The after each whereas needs to be the semicolon and, which it looks like Athena already added. Yay. Thank you. Except for the last whereas gets the period. Um, we would need to add the sponsors. Um, I don't know whether there's anyone other than Michelle, but um, the sponsors go at the top. And then my biggest question relates to two things. Proclamation sounds so strange in this sense, right? Like we're not, what proclaim tends to bring feelings of happiness and celebration in my mind. And that's not really what we're doing here. So I wonder if we would, if, if Michelle would be willing to change it to resolution. So it's a, be it resolved instead of proclaiming sort of things. Um, and with that, I read the second whereas. Um, the one that says we express our unequivocal condemnation um, as much more of a sort of ending be it resolved sort of phrasing instead of a whereas phrasing that that could be potentially moved down into and combined with the now therefore so it would read something like now therefore be it resolved we the amherst town council express our unequivocal the rest of that sentence and join our hearts and minds with others working towards something like that is to one more broader be it resolved but that was just my initial thoughts on reading it, but I do want to thank Michelle for, for bringing this forward. 
those sound like really great suggestions to me that I agree with. And um, I was wondering what I I'm just thinking back to like the George Floyd. Do we do we we don't ever just say a statement in the wake of or something, right? So it's always either the proclamation or resolution in this case. Okay. Yeah. Then that makes, uh, I think I'm seeing shaking heads. <laughs> um, so I like those two suggestions. Thank you. Jennifer. Um, yeah. So Michelle, I want to ask, so you received input from a broad swath of the community. Well, it was, you know, 48 hours. So right. I don't... <laughs> no, but I like the interfaith council. It wasn't yeah, so I received, like, I um, spoke with Rabbi Devorah Jacobson. Um, she sent me several statements. She's a member of the JCA, but also a rabbi in Northampton. Um, and I spoke with uh, different community members. I also tried to take in various different statements that I saw coming out. Um, but I would not say that I spoke with, like, a br like I didn't have time to speak with, you know, many, I think I spoke with probably half a dozen people that I think have some understanding of uh, th this matter from their organizational uh, work. So I don't know if that answers your question, Jen. I don't yeah, know. I if guess. Um, no. So I really appreciate your doing. I, this is a lot to take on. Um, so I'm just going to say that I would, we have, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't, I concern that the council gets, spends a lot of time on a big discussion of Middle East policy and we don't really have time for that. So that, does anybody have any feelings about that? Um, I don't have feelings about council time being spent on this um, in the sense that if, if there's that much um, that the council needs to question or share or anything else, then why this is kind of an important issue on multiple levels, I don't know. Anybody else? In... It's just not simple. It's not right. I, I think I think GOL ought to maybe focus on clarity, consistency, and yes, actionability, and then and thank then you. when it comes to the council, there can be a discussion on whether or not the council. So I did have that question also because some of my yeah, we, we shouldn't weigh in on substance. No, no, I mean, yeah, what Mandy did was not weigh in on substance, but move things to make sections of it stronger and clearer. Anything else, Jennifer? No. Okay, Lynn? Um, I want to mention that as I did actually have an interaction with the key person that I have worked with in the Interfaith Council uh, to ask whether they were going to be doing anything. And he indicated that they were not. He personally was going to be, you know, demonstrating for peace. Uh, but in the email, he pointed out the complexity of the situation and um, from all the various perspectives. And so what I'm hoping is that the resolution um, goes to the council, that if the council feels that they can vote on it, they vote on it, and we not use it as a time to debate uh, Middle East politics because I think that um, there is, that that we are not Congress. We are not um, somebody that's going to offer financial support or anything else. Um, so I, and I also uh, did talk with Michelle starting, God, I can't remember if it was yesterday or Monday, but, um, and knew that she was going to be working on this. And we discussed both the intricacies of the, um, issue uh, of the various positions people could take. And so I, I, I just want to thank Michelle for taking the time to consult with people. I also um, did share it uh, again with somebody um, I know who had 
struggled yet just yesterday to write a similar statement for an organization they are involved in and confirmed she did read it and um you know felt that we kind of struck the the middle ground if you will in in striking the middle ground uh we're never going to please everybody and some people would like us to be stand very strong on one side or the other of this issue or somewhere else and it is a um a very difficult issue so um again i i think michelle did a lot of work consulting with the people she did i've tried to do a little bit of the same um in terms of this so um that's where we are thank you michelle yeah, I just wanted to say that I, I just wanted to share that I do feel a little bit vulnerable, um, like being the sole sponsor on this, um, and I'm willing to, you know, do that. Um, but if anybody else felt like uh, they would uh, like to also sponsor it, that would be great too. But if not, I'm fine. Um, just wanted to express that sense of vulnerability I've been feeling. Jennifer? Um, yeah, I wanted to thank Lynn really um, expressed better <laughs> than I did what um, I was trying to say, you know, just to be aware that, you know, we, you know, I don't know what the conversation will be in the council. Um, so, Michelle, let me think about um, joining you on this. I, I, I would like to also think about that as well. Mandy? And if, if Michelle is willing, I am happy to join because of how Michelle has, has, you know, taken on and, and tried to lay that middle ground. And I so would like to make it unanimous. Yeah, just join yeah. as well. Put me on it as well now. Just, it's a, a difficult piece of work. Please, please add me as well. Thank you. And I, I will point out that um, Anna is in the audience and I don't want to put Anna or Pat on the spot here, but I wanted to say that Anna um, was very interested in this and, um, and uh, kind of clued into everything that was going on. Um, so I just wanted to we'll let that. Anna, Anna in, in a minute, but I did want to sponsor this as well. So I don't think that got heard. It is, it's tricky. It's, it's deeply, there's part of me that's ripped apart by what's happening. Uh, and I don't know, but yes, I can do that. And Anna, can, Athena, can you bring Anna in so she can speak for herself? Not that she usually has difficulty with that. I know I'm usually so so quiet. Hi, everybody. Um, no, I think I, it seems like there's a lot of folks who are really willing and able to support this. So I'm happy to um, take a step back and um, wait no. until it comes to the council level. That's fine. You can add add Anna as well. I think uh, that's okay. I, I mean, I I really yeah. appreciate that. I I, I trust all y'all. So that's that's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. So are we done with the edits? I think that we are. I mean, anything I have to say would affect substance, so I'm not going to do that. Then I move that we recommend to the council. No, I, I move that this be declared clear, consistent, and actionable. Is that the right motion, Athena and Mandy Jo? Yeah, Second. Okay, I'm going to call a roll count, call vote as I see you. Ms. Miller? Aye. Ms. Taub? Yes. Ms. Griesmer? Yes. Ms. Haneke? Aye. And I'm an aye. I just wish we didn't have to do these kinds of things because it wasn't happening. <laughs> Um, yeah. Thank you, Pat, for taking it under the 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you, Michelle, for all you did. I not easy. Okay. Um, let me see. It's 1026 and it looks like we're ready to move on to the rules of procedure. 
and in the agenda, I th I thought and I that I had said certain sections um, when I sent the agenda, but maybe I didn't. You <laughs> Did I? did, and I. <laughs> well, I the reason sure. I'm asking is we can pick up where we were, but it I would like to go back to the public comment. Um, I think it's five, five or six. I have, I always get those mixed up. Basically, I would like us to relook at we we uh, short we wanted to shorten public comment. It was a unanimous decision to do thirty five minutes. We got tons of feedback, uh, and we changed it to two hours. And I, I think that was a panic reaction. Uh, and I do not. I do not want to sit if through two hours of public comment unless it's really there. I don't want it to be a strategy or anything else. So I really would like to simply go back the way the rule read originally, which wasn't to put a time limit on it in any direction, uh, because it really does need to be a decision in the moment uh, by the whoever is chairing the meeting. Um, so that's, that was, I don't, I'm assuming we can talk about it, but it's part of the rules of procedure. I don't, you know, but it's one I didn't want to, uh, to forget. Yeah. The length of public comment periods, uh, once it has reached 120 minutes. Yeah. And I, th I don't remember exactly what it said originally. So I, 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 I included more because um, I included the entire rules because there was some changes that the committee didn't agree on before that. Right. Yeah. So, but we can jump there. I'm getting nauseous. <laughs> so, uh, uh, can you go back to the top of this section because there's other red lines i i feel like we've spent this has spanned so much time that before we vote the whole thing we may be we should do a complete review oh yeah i'm just yeah but right now i'd like to focus on uh 5.1c um and i uh I mean, I I don't, Mandy, go ahead. So, um, I think I would be okay with removing the 120 as sort of an automatic thing, I think is sort of how it's written here, but maybe adding in something after a certain minimum length of time where the council, uh, uh, that after a certain amount of time, I don't know what it would be worded like, but that the council may vote to end public comment after 30 minutes upon, you know, pick 30 minutes or an hour or something upon motion. So let, let, me, let, let me explain why I'm thinking something like this. I, I would like to make sure our rules allow us to vote to end public comment in extreme circumstances. So there was recently a California public meeting of their, I don't know whether it was council or the sort of commissioners or something, where it appeared that an AI bot or someone with a bot had multiple attendees virtually. And when they opened up public comment, like 12 or 13 of them raised their hand all at once. And every single one of them was vitriol, um, misogynistic, anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic, racist, you name it, anti-trans. And there's really no way to stop that for each of the three minutes unless <laughs> Again, thinking about our most recent SJC case and all, where we're one of the things these rules can try and do is protect the council from claims of open meeting law violations and First Amendment violations. So I think a motion, something in the rules that says 
you know, um, after a certain length of time or at some point in time, the council may vote by X vote. It doesn't even need to be majority. We could make it, you know, super majority to end public comment might protect us from claims of, of bias or even just from sitting through two hours of AI bots that have all raised their hand um, and, and are spewing things like this, but are claiming to be Amherst residents because you can program an AI bot to say almost anything you want, including I live at X with a name. Um, we haven't faced any of it yet. Hopefully we never will. Um, but I, I, re I want the rules to protect the council from acts like that and give the council ways to address that and move on to business if something like that happens. Jennifer? Um, well, I raised my hand before that, <clears throat> that comment. I mean, so responding to Mandy, could something literally be put in about an AI bot <laughs> right. that in that case, um, because I have, how that's written, I don't have any, um, issue with it. I think we rarely go to an hour and a half. Um, it's two hours. I guess that's two hours. two hours. That's two hours. Um, I mean, do we, I guess I don't really have any concern about the way it is now that, that, um, people are allowed to comment for up to three minutes. I do like that at the council the presiding officer's discretion. I do prefer that we say we increase that to two minutes from one, but you know, I don't see why we really couldn't leave it the way it is. <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, if it goes, if it's, I just think it's, it, we're making a rule for the, the, the time I've been on the council, I haven't, if there's extensive public comment, it's because it's an issue that people are really concerned about. So it, it just seems to me the way we have it now is working. Um, thank you, Jennifer. Um, I wanna say that um, the ruling, the Southboro ruling talked about <laughs> not being able to stop someone from criticizing, critiquing the select board and things like that. I don't believe if we had seven or eight or whatever vitriolic where there were racist, sexist, transphobic statements being made that we would have to um, not cut those off. I, I, I find that, I don't know. I mean, because Southboro really was talking about criticisms of the of the basically criticisms of any council member or policy or things like that. I I don't know. Right, because uh, if you what we're talking about here is hate speech, you don't have to yeah. allow hate speech. Yeah. Or do you? I don't know. I think there's fears of that, but yeah, Mandy. You might have to if it's addressed towards the council as the council is quote racist or the council is anti-trans oh. or the council is that yeah, and you true. can't stop it. Or if it's addressed towards any one person that the council has authority over or the actions of the council or anything like that, right? Mm. Um, and there was no, to, to address Jennifer's thing of, well, can we write in something about AI bots? They're just suspecting it was someone running AI bots because of how the hands went up all at the same time, not staggered or anything, but there's no guarantee with how well AI is and voice recognition is now that you'd even be able to detect it. Um, so I, I don't know the, with the Southboro and the parameters, as I said, I don't know, it, it sounds like we're saying we basically, if we allow public speech, during a public speech part of the meeting, we have to let someone go on for three minutes, unless we have parameters around which, you know, that it must relate to council business on the agenda or this or that. But even that, if someone really wants to, can be done. So that's all I'm 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 thinking about right now is how do we 
give the council the best opportunity if something like that happens to be able to get control of the meeting again. Michelle? I think you just answered my question, Mandy. So what C is trying to do is uh, deal with a circumstance like that. And I think, Jennifer, what I'm hearing you say is that hasn't been any kind of theme that we've seen. So we don't necessarily need to add a limitation. Is that accurate, Jennifer? Is that what you were? Yeah, I hate to, to limit public comment or put anything in an extreme because something like that might happen yeah. because I think it could be once it's there it could be used to limit public comment yeah I think I I don't I I would be fine eliminating C um I understand where Mandy's coming from um but I think as it is now I think we're fine without it personally so that's where I would lean yeah, and for me, I still, I, I agree with that. Um, but I also feel like, why do we have any time period there? Because it, it just like, you know, Mandy is projecting something that could happen, could happen at our next meeting, um, and wants to condense po the possibility, you know, I just, we have never gone two hours for public comment. So why does it have to be there? It really has always been a decision. And when we have more than one public comment period, because we have a specific item that we want the public to count on, that's an additional. Does it add into the 120? Or is that already another 120? It just feels like, so I would like to see no time limit there and the decision be made by the presiding officer at each meeting for the length of time of public comment. Jennifer? I agree. <laughs> I well, agree with you. Can we get well, rid that's of all that I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn? Yeah. So you want to completely strike C. And and I understand, okay? And I'm I'm not I don't think I'm necessarily opposed, but you just said something else, and that is that the length of time be determined by the presiding officer, essentially implying that the presiding officer can open public comment and say, we're going to have public comment for the next 30 minutes. I'm not saying that. Okay. I, I just wanted to check what you were saying. I'm not, no. I'm okay. saying that you look at... Um, what I mean, and I'll get right to you, Athena, I'm sorry, but what I mean is if there are three people who've raised their hand for public comment, that's nine minutes, 15 minutes if, you know, with shuffling around. If 25 people raise their hands, I still don't think it reaches 120 minutes. If, But you or the presiding officer, whoever that might be, makes a decision whether it's going to be three minutes or two minutes. That's a decision you make. So right. I feel like the decision, uh, I think you can judge how long it might take, but I, are you going to time the 120 minutes or I, I don't know. I just don't think it's necessary. Sure. And so all I'm saying is I don't think there has to be anything in there about the presiding officer can determine the length of time of public comment. That's actually, you know, I don't know. Anyway, Athena and then Michelle. Um, and I'll come back to you, Lynn, if that's if I heard you. Yeah, I think to, to Mandy's point, the, the length of time is the protection the council has um, and the presiding officer has to manage the meeting. So my suggestion would be to mm -hmm. take this out and then the presiding officer may reduce the time allowed per person and may limit the time, the public comment period to a certain time. Mm -hmm. So rather rather than based on the number of people who wish, wish to speak, the presiding officer might say, you know, we'll take public comment for an hour and this that would empower the presiding officer to, you know, put a limit there. Um, 
based on the number of people who wish to speak or based on the number of items on the agenda and, and things that need to get done or whatever. That's an interesting solution. Uh, Michelle? I, I So can the council could always, somebody, a counselor could always move, right, to extend public comment. There's nothing that that does not allow that to occur, right? So if I was, if I saw that there were 30 people left and I, they haven't had a chance to speak and the presiding officer wants to move on, I could I move to have the public comment period extended and then it would be the council's decision at that point? Right, right now, there's no limit on the public comment period, so the council doesn't decide to extend it. This is the part that extends, if there were a limit, this is the part that would allow the council to extend the limit. So you could keep this in and the council could decide to extend it, or but it doesn't give the council an opportunity to, to reduce it and it doesn't empower the presiding officer to reduce it. The, the length of the entire public comment period, not just the length of each individual, Right. Right. Mandy? Let me ask a similar question because I'd, I'd like to hear Athena's thoughts on this. If we eliminate C at, completely, at any point in time, can a counselor, after while there are still public commenters raising their hand, could a counselor make a motion to end the public comment period if we don't have anything in the rules that allow them to, you know, so after five minutes, after 30 minutes, after 120, or do we really need something in the rules to allow the council to vote to end the public comment period? Or is that just always implied by Robert's rules? I, I think, um, I think making that decision ahead of time is really important because counselors can look through the list of people who have their hand raised. They can see who's in the audience who might be waiting to speak. And that, and so a vote, a council vote to extend or to limit at a certain point could be, um, could be interpreted as um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> right, like the tail of somebody's voice or something. Yeah, like right, Dis discriminatory yeah. for for some based on you know I, I know that these people all want to say this or that and and I don't want to hear it, so I'm going to move to right. So I I think it. Yeah, I think I think making that decision ahead of time rather than allowing the council. I don't think that it would. It's not a um, privileged motion, so it's not a. There's not anything in the rules that would allow a motion to end in the first place. So I think there needs to be some empowerment of someone to limit at the beginning. That's what I would advise. Jennifer, and then I want to ask a question. So as it is now the presiding officer could say, because um, I think it's happened before, you know, uh, I'm going to, you know, in whatever, 30 seconds or something, raise your hand if you want to speak. And I'm not, we're not going to allow anyone else in the queue after that. So that, and then we can already do that, correct? So here's the, here's the rules about who's signed up. So people sign up. We take uh, the chair takes the people signed up first, and then here's the addition the that isn't in the current rules. The, the presiding officer may recognize people not on the register if it's not exceeded 30 minutes, but that's not an existing rule. See, I, I think you should be able to raise your hand and get in the queue after people start speaking. So I'm, I would not be in favor of saying if you're you know you you can't get in the queue after the first person speaks but if if public comment's been going on for an hour or whatever it's been extensive and the presiding officer says 
okay, I am now going to say, if you're not, I'm going to give you 10 seconds or whatever to raise your hand. And after that, we're not going to take, we're only going to take people that are in the queue now. Then would we not, and that can happen. So I don't think we have to have the 120 minutes. Yeah. Is there anything you want to add, Jennifer? No. Okay. What I was sitting here thinking is what if in terms of consistency um, and if we had on the agenda that public comment will um, happen from uh, 640, 640 to 740 at every council meeting, but that it could be, so there was a known time period. Uh, I'm just making up that period. And then it also could be unless it's extended by a vote of the council, something like that. Because we we it generally is at the beginning of the meeting, not absolutely always, but and we'd have to remain consistent to that. So I'm not sure as someone who's not juggling the town council agenda, I'm not sure whether that would work, Jennifer. I would just be concerned if it's an issue, you know, that people are really that there may sometimes be more than an hour. I mean, I think it's we usually don't, but when it is, it's because it's something. People right. are really what I'm about saying it. is that then you could say it, this is I, I'm saying there are a lot of people here. This is a contentious issue or a, a complex issue. So I move that we extend the public comment period, and then it could be voted on by the council. Is that is so? Some, I'm saying, Jen? Your your two suggestions are a little bit conflicting. So you're saying that uh, either the either the president puts or the chair puts a specific time period on the agenda because that's at the discretion of the chair or the council vote to extend. Um, but right now there's not a provision in the rules to, to limit the entire public comment period yeah. in the first place. So, so a vote More to extend. Right. So it doesn't, yeah. I think okay. those things. I'm just trying to find a solution. I, I do not want to uh, set a time I don't want to say that we have a 30 minute period or 35 minutes. We did that. It was a disaster. And the critique was we all deserve to hear <laughs> all five of us. Michelle? I mean, one other suggestion is just changing the language a bit so that it says length of public comment. Once a public comment period has reached 120 minutes, the council um shall move to extend by majority vote or something instead of saying shall end the public comment period i mean it's unless really extended by it's yeah unless it, i just i wonder if like the concern from the public will be that we're ending it after a certain period of time therefore limiting their capacity their ability but we to have that right we do have that right to right say the time frame and uh, just still yeah. extend do you mean yeah, yeah yeah i i i know it's it's kind of a subtle subtle subtlety but of, um, of all the things that we're rumbling around with here i would rather leave it the way it is than <laughs> even though i would like to see it changed anything maybe else could I we do... interrupt you. oh that's okay pat no i i wonder if we could just I mean, so I think most of us have, or at least a couple of us have said we would like to see C, three of us have said we'd like to see C removed or would be more comfortable with it removed. Um, so I think that unless there are folks who want it really strongly feel that it should be back in there, then I don't think, I think removing it seems appropriate. Lynn? Yeah. Yeah. Uh I'm, I have no problem removing it for now, but I'd like to copy it and preserve the wording in a comment off to the side so that, uh, because if we come back to it, I'd like to at least have it be there. Yeah, that makes sense. Anybody else? Mandy? 
So I, I just want to clarify that with this removal, the, the committee is going to end up recommending that the council have no way of ending a public comment period as long as there are hands still raised that were raised at the beginning of the public comment period, no matter no matter how long it's gone. Is that what the committee is recommending? If it be four hours, if it be three hours, if it be a hundred AI, AI bots, because um, I can tell you the, the California group didn't have a problem until they had a problem, <laughs> right? Like that's that's how this happens. Um, you don't you don't experience it till you do, and you never know when it's coming. But um, is is that what the committee is 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 going to recommend that there be no safeguard against any of it because there's no way to make that motion at any point in time? Lynn? Uh, I think, Mandy Jo, the reason I didn't want to just wipe it out without having a record of it is I think we need to think about that. And um, because the other piece that I, in hearing this conversation, I want to make sure I heard it because basically when people come into the room physically, they sign up. Do we accept additional people signing up after we start public comment if they're in the room? We do. Yeah. Okay. Someone may come later. Someone mm -hmm. may come later. The same thing is true uh, if they're on Zoom. So whichever way we do it, we need to do it consistently on Zoom. Because, I mean, as you all know, we watch the Zoom hands carefully. And after three people that have raised their hand in the beginning comment, then all of a sudden someone pops up. Sometimes that person wasn't in the room, but a lot of times they were in the room to begin with. And now they just decide they want to make public comment and that can keep going. Um, but I was hearing people suggest that if you didn't raise your hand in the beginning on Zoom, then you wouldn't be recognized. And I think that's counter to what we do if you're there in person. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Jennifer? Yeah, I think you should be able to raise your hand after public comment. Like I couldn't support three. I mean, I mean, I know that there's, an issue of going, but if somebody gets up and says the sky is green, you should be able to raise your hand and say, no, it's blue. Okay. Well, it, so what you're saying with that example is the public can debate each other during public. No, no, but you can just, you can. <laughs> well, that's if, what, that's what that is. Yeah. Well, I think they can't. Yeah. I mean, you, you're living, you're saying how many, if, if you're sitting in the audience and a comment is made and you, that, yes, I think you should be able to. And I mean, what we're saying is you're limiting how many times people can speak. So you're not going to have a, but I think you should be able, or if, and particularly since people can't see who's there, I mean, maybe you think a comment's going to be raised and you don't raise your hand and then it's not. I, I mean, I, I think you should absolutely yeah. be able to raise your hand after public comment has started. Mandy? I guess I disagree. Um, I think we need some controls over things like this. I don't. I. I. I don't think it's appropriate for our public comment period to turn into a debate between residents. Um, mm. Number one. Uh, number two. Item three puts you know allows people to do so as long as we haven't exceeded a certain amount of time. Right. It's not a strict. You can't. It's and it's more clear than the current number three, which is if time allows which is very unclear and very subjective. So I think we need something more clear than if time allows, which is what our current rule is. Um, and and I guess I, I believe that if you intend to make public comment, you come to the meeting intending to make public comment and you should know ahead of time. And it if you wanna make sure something is said during public comment, you shouldn't rely on others. Um, and wait to see if it was made by someone else, you can always 
lower your hand if someone has made it. But, you know, item B, the the time of three minutes versus two or right now one minute is made based on the number of hands that are raised when the presiding officer calls for it. If we then, you know, if if people, if only three, if we have 50 people in the audience and three people raise their hand during that 30 seconds that Lynn says, you know, how many right now, if you want to make public comment, raise your hand and three people, whether they're in the person in, in person or not raise their hand. And then Lynn says, okay, three minutes. And then once the three minutes is declared, another 30 people raise their hand that defeats the purpose of item B trying to figure out how much time someone has. Um, so I I think we need D3 in some sort of wording. 30 minutes might not be the right time to say, to essentially define time allows. Maybe it's a different number, um, but I, I think we need something in D3 to clarify the current D3. <laughs> I'm feeling sorry that I ever brought this up uh, and we maybe should go back to what we deleted about the 120 minutes, but I want to hear from Athena before I hear from you, Jennifer. You had your hand raised, Athena. I was thinking about um, I was thinking about an open meeting of the residents. The charter is pretty clear that an open meeting of the residents has to be on the request of 200 residents um, to, to allow space for extensive public comments on a particular issue. Um, I think the council, you know, maybe there's something about adding move to call a special meeting. Um, to hear additional comments, I'm not sure. I was I was thinking about that, but I I looked up the charter provision and and it's 200, so I I don't know if that works in this sense. But um, I wonder if if moving they, moving something to a special meeting might. Um, Athena, remember it also says or we can call a special meeting. Right, the council can call a special meeting. I. Um, and actually, I prefer the way the charter is written on that because um, the only time we did call a special meeting was 132 Northampton Road. Yeah, you're talking about um, an open meeting of the residents. I was right. I was saying that that, that the charter is clear on that. But I was thinking, um, you know, if we have if there is a limit, if the if the committee decides to recommend a limit, perhaps allowing counselors to make a motion to hear additional comments on a particular topic in this section hmm. to hear additional, I'm not sure that was. I, it, I, I'm, Go ahead, Lynn. No, no. I, I will just say that there's a lot of people who would love to have the council call a special meeting on topics that frankly are not that are not part of the purview of the council. And what I wanna make sure is we don't open that door for misuse. Jennifer. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to return to, um, I feel very strongly that people should be able to raise their hand after public comment has begun. Even if if somebody gets home, you know, joins the meeting five or 10 minutes late, they've been at work, that they should be able to get into the queue and not say you missed your chance. Yeah, I agree with that. Michelle? Yeah, I wanted to support that as well for a variety of reasons. I think it's important that um, if we're still in that public comment period that people should be able to add themselves to the list. What a hell of a topic. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Um, I um, honestly am comfortable moving back to the 120. I don't like it, but I feel like this opens so many cans of worms. And as much as I like worms, it just feels 
a bit overwhelming. Jennifer? Yeah, I, I prefer if we're going to have a number, the 120 to the 30. Yeah. Michelle? Yeah, so clarifying, Pat, you're saying add the 120 back, but then are we- Add the uh, C back the way it was. Okay, and then would that mean we would be removing D3? Oh, God. Um, I, I don't want to remove that. Um, interesting. How are they? Yeah, how do we see yeah. those? being connected non, with non residents and any person not on the register uh, prior to the first public comment will be recognized to speak at the discretion of the presiding officer. And maybe we can, you know, I don't want to, ex oh, and only if public comment had not already exceeded 30 minutes. Uh, that uh, I feel like we should take that part out. I, I agree. I think we should just take it out. Yeah. Maybe I, we can say at the discretion of the presiding officer, period. Period. Yeah. yeah exactly. I can go with that. Take that and only take out the time. Yeah. Is everybody okay with that? No, but then we're saying that you can't raise your hand unless the presiding officer, after it's begun, unless the presiding officer says you can. Well, you can raise your hand. They'll be recognized at the discretion of the presiding officer. Yeah. And generally speaking, they are recognized. Yeah, but you're saying now that if you raise, it's not a given that if you raise your hand, so if you're late to the meeting and you you may not be able to raise your hand unless the presiding officer says that you can. It gets, gets now it's saying you can't, the deep, the default is you can't unless the presiding officer says you can. This is prior to the first public comment. Right. That's what I have a problem with. If, if public comment has begun and you. I don't think that I don't read this as speaking to if public comment has begun. I read this as to the first public comment. Does that mean the first person speaking or. Yeah. Oh, I thought it meant like the first public comment period somehow. Okay. All right. So then, yeah, we should think about that. No, it, it, it says that. First public. So, so the way I, I read it and, and yes, the rule will require trust in a presiding officer. Right. And, and we just have to accept that some rules that that's what a presiding officer sometimes manages is some of that trust. Right. Um, the way I interpret this is you know going back to the length of individual public comment up to three minutes the presiding officer says okay everyone who wants to make public comment raise your hand and then they wait and they see how many hands are raised and then they make a determination as to how much length of time again with trust three minutes two minutes as this one would be um one minute right now in in our current roles um, based on that number of hands and the length of time, you know, if we've got 10 hands, three minutes, if we've got 30 hands, maybe it's one minute or two minutes, right? And then how D would operate would be they've set that time based on who claimed, who said they wanted to speak ahead of time. And now we're trusting the the, the presiding officer to then say, you know, we have 20 people ready to speak. We're going to allow two minutes a person. And then suddenly once public comment starts, another 20 people come in, the presiding officer can say, you know what? We're not gonna accept anyone else or we're only going to accept residents that didn't have their hand raised ahead of time for that two minutes or everyone else who raised their hands afterward gets one minute. Uh, just that trust of trying to manage the meeting because our meeting is not just, public comment, it's also a business meeting. And we have to trust our presiding officer to manage those together. And that's what I see D3 as doing, giving that authority and trust to the providing, presiding officer, who, as Jennifer has right, rightfully said, most of the time, 
is going to recognize everyone because we have four people speaking. <laughs> right? um, we don't. I'm going to interrupt for a half a second, oh, Mandy, yeah. to tell you yeah. it's 11:07. Yeah. Thank you. I know. <laughs> and I don't want to uh, uh, necessarily continue this uh, to make a final decision on this without all of us being present. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah, I couldn't vote for this because it, what it says is you can't raise your hand after public comment has begun unless the presiding officer says that you can versus any, you can't, could raise your hand, but the presiding officer, at some point in the meeting, the presiding officer can say, okay, you know, um, I'm going to give everyone, I, I remember Lynn doing this once. She said, I'm going to give everyone a certain amount of time to raise your hands and then I'm not going to allow anyone else to get in the queue. That that is the exception. Here it's saying once public comment, the first person is given public comment, you cannot raise your hand unless the presiding officer says that you can. And I'd rather it be the other way around that you can, but the presiding officer has the discretion to give everybody, you know, a 10 second raise your hand now. It says they won't be recognized. They'll only be recognized to speak at the discretion, not that they can't raise their hand. Well, that's, I guess, kind of the same thing. If you're not, if you're not, if you haven't gotten in the queue before the first public comment, you do not have to be recognized that that's the rule unless there's an exception made. I'm not laughing at you, Jennifer. I'm laughing at all of us and the difficulty of this, honestly. Michelle? I'm sort of with Pat. And I think that if what we're trying to do is have some ability to manage a, a business meeting that's not a public hearing that's, you know, specific for for public comment, um, I would rather, I would like to put the 120 back in and rather anybody raise their hand anytime during the public comment period, period. <laughs> I know? agree with that. <laughs> um, and, and that I think will solve both, both of these, these issues, because I do think that sometimes it takes people a little bit, maybe they hear something that another public commenter says, and I get the point about debate, but I think sometimes it's just like people come late, whatever. If there's a public comment period, raise your hand whenever you want. But if we reach that 120, then we deal with, you know, we deal with that at that time basically. That would be my preference. <laughs> Listening to that preference, I want to reduce the 120 to an hour to 60 <laughs> minutes with the ability to extend at the discretion. You know, I, I don't know. This is insane. <laughs> it may we, be really, we really, it. this has never come forward as a major issue during actual meetings, you know, um, because we look we look to the presi presiding officer to make a decision. We don't like the decision that we they make. We can say something. I don't know. I guess <laughs> Jennifer. I think it has, doesn't really come up because we don't usually have public comment that extends beyond an hour. But I think. Well, then what? I I like the hundred and twenty minutes if it happens. I just I think we're kind of trying to find, um, what's the word, you know, a, a cure for a disease that hasn't presented itself. So why? So right, we, which is why, why, why don't be... we just put it back the way it was and not have 120 or anything else? <laughs> I've always been okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let's just, <laughs> oh God. Uh <laughs> Michelle, I'll just try to I think, kindly ways to fix. I know. <laughs> I, I think that Mandy is thinking about, and in particular, Mandy is thinking about potential scenarios as we develop as a, a a council that could occur in our you know day and age. And so I think that there's putting in the 120 minutes, this can always be changed. We can always bring this back. You know what I mean? If we see 
Um, but I think it it sort of resolves uh, the possibility that it could extend beyond. It could just be so out of you know bounds that we can't get anything done, and it would then force us to have to consider another way to have the public be heard on whatever that particular matter is. Um, which would be yeah. Which we could do, you know. So I don't. Yeah, that's I. <laughs> When do you have to leave, Mandy? <laughs> right now? <laughs> Maybe we're not ready. About Save right us now, from ourselves. <laughs> if, if I may, I would be fine with adding in that that length of total public comment back in and deleting three com D three completely. It's okay, just let's go with D three is so not clear <laughs> that if we leave it in, I want something clearer. But if we add in the total length, then I would be. Fine. I think I, I I don't think then deleting D3 is problematic. Deleting it completely, not just the proposed new language, but but keeping the deletion of D3. Um right. Do we have consensus here? We're adding back in. Go. We're C. adding back in the 120 and taking out D3. I'm good with that. All right, Michelle, Lynn. Mandy, I'm going to say that we did it by consensus. Get the thing back the way it was. <laughs> we have 12 minutes until Ms. Griesmer needs to leave. And, and I need to go now. So I yeah, apologize. No, I know. I, thank you for your work, Mandy. Bye. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Pat, you didn't do public comment. Oh, I, okay. So, <laughs> um, nobody's there. Call, I, as, uh, I don't think Anna is even here. There's nobody there. I'm going to call on the public now to have and give them an opportunity to speak for the next 120 minutes. If you would like <laughs> to speak for more than three minutes, please raise your hand. And since there's no one in the audience, and hopefully <laughs> I'm ending public comment now at 11.14. <laughs> Oh God, that'll probably be used against me in the uh, re-election campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor has too much of a sense of humor. <laughs> okay. Um, we have, uh, I mean, we'll still have a quorum uh, when Lynn leaves, uh, but I am also really hard stop at 11.30. I have to be somewhere at 11.45. We don't mind ending early. Well, here's what I'm going to suggest. Given the complexity of any rule change, I would like to adjourn the meeting now at 1114. Is that acceptable? Ms. O'Keefe, is that all right with you? Sounds good to me. <laughs> all right. Then. This meeting of the... Oh, oh, um, Michelle oh, had oh. a future agenda item. Thank you for saying oh, that, Athena. Right. I, I, Another I, one? No, just the one I asked about earlier, remember, that I would like to bring up. But actually, Oh, that's right. That's right. I would love to talk to you about that offline before it comes into this meeting. Um, if that works for you, I'll give you a call about that. And you're Are you talking, talking to me or Pat? Right to Pat. Yeah, to oh, Pat. Okay. <laughs> All right. We can do that. You're, okay. you're the chair. <laughs> <laughs> How about you run the next meeting? To us? <laughs> you're the, what is it? Heffa. Yeah, you're the you're the you big want to chief. run the next meeting? Oh no, I wasn't asking that. I was just I saying know, the music. But I'm asking to, yeah, that. It, it's yes, that's fine. Okay, we'll we'll check in and we'll do. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. I declare the meeting ended, adjourned, ceased, <laughs> dismissed. Take Thanks. care, everyone, and thank bye -bye. you.